everyone and welcome back to the Steinitz Du Bois match from 1862 London and this is game 2. In the first game Wilhelm Steinitz defeated his strong opponent, defeated the Italian chess master in the first game. So Wilhelm Steinitz is leading with one point. Du Bois is zero points right now and for a reminder the first player to score the fifth point will be victorious in this match. So it was not a very long match. And for the records, before forgetting, Bobby Fischer himself, Bobby Fischer wrote an article about the games of this match in the Chess Life magazine from April to December. His articles was published in Chess Life in 1964. So it is interesting to know that Bobby Fischer studied these games seriously and he studied this match very deeply. So let's check out the second game. In the second game, Wilhelm Steinitz has the white pieces, Du Bois has the black pieces. Wilhelm Steinitz starts the game with playing e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6. And we basically have the Italian opening. Evans Gambit. And as you know, this was a popular opening at that time. Attacking the bishop and sacrificing the people, but defending, not accepting the Evans Gambit. Steinitz is advancing and attacking the knight, b5. Knight to a5, attacking the bishop. Instead of defending the bishop, Steinitz captured the pawn and attacking the f pawn. And if knight takes bishop, capturing back with the knight is possible, and white is better. So black is defending the f pawn, knight to h6, and developing the knight, but d4 by Steinitz, d6, and capturing the knight by Wilhelm Steinitz. Well, obviously in this position, if defending the knight, then knight takes bishop. So, bishop takes on h6, d takes on e5, and as you can see in this position, both of the pieces of Steinitz is under attack. Which bishop to save? Well, Wilhelm Steinitz captured the g-pawn and attacking the rook, rook to g8. And then, bishop takes on f7 by Wilhelm Steinitz. It is already looking extremely aggressive. Steinitz is aiming for the king. This shows you the mindset of Wilhelm Steinitz at that time, always seeking the destruction of his opponent's king, like the Terminator. After bishop takes on f7, we have king takes on f7, and then bishop takes on e5. Actually, this is not bad for white, because white has four extra pawns, and for a piece, Wilhelm Steinitz has four extra pawns. Queen to g5, and knight to c3, knight to c4, and queen to f3, that's check. King to e8, and knight to d5. And knight to f6 is on the cards for Steinitz. Du Bois played bishop to a5, check, c3, defending. And knight takes on e5, capturing the dangerous bishop. D takes on e5, and Wilhelm Steinitz has doubled pawn structure, and then black captured on g2. Queen takes on g2, not exchanging the queens, of course. Queen to h5 by Steinitz. Queen to g6, blocking and insisting on exchanging the queens. And Steinitz played queen to h4, defending the e-pawn at the same time. Rook to g7, defending the checkmate threat. And king to d2, what would you do in this position? Well, Du Bois played simply queen to g5 and simplifying the game and removing the queens in the chessboard. It is white to move and Stein is played rook from h to g1, exchanging the rooks. Stein is has three extra pawns and Du Bois has the one extra bishop. Du Bois is a piece of but also at the same time, the pawn structure of Wilhelm Steinitz on the e-file is not looking amazing, as you can see. 
F2 rook takes on g1. We have king to f7. Defending the g square and not allowing the infiltration of the rook. Knight to f6. Bishop to e6. Knight takes on h7 and rook to h8. Attacking the knight. Knight to g5. King to e7 and h3 by Steinitz. Defending the h pawn. Bishop to b6. Targeting the f pawn. Defending. Rook to g2. Rook to f8. Attacking twice. How to defend? Right now Wilhelm Steinitz has four extra pawns. We have f3. Defending. Pushing the pawn. And defending with the knight. But then bishop takes on a2. It appears that Wilhelm Steinitz can't defend everything. Rook to g4. Rook to d8. Check. King to c2. And bishop to e3. Attacking the knight. Rook to g2. Bishop to f4. Attacking the e pawn. h4. Bishop to c4. Attacking the b pawn. And knight to h3. By Steinitz. But bishop takes on e5. Again. Steinitz can't defend everything. And things are going bad for Steinitz. F4. Bishop to F1. Attacking the rook. Rook to G5. Defending and attacking the bishop. Bishop to F6. Rook to G3. Defending the knight. Well, in this position, Du Bois captured on H4. And attacking the rook. And Wilhelm Steinitz is losing everything now. Because he has only one extra pawn and Du Bois. And Du Bois has the one extra bishop. Du Bois is a piece of. And this endgame is losing for white. But does Du Bois has what it takes to defeat Steinitz on the endgame? Let's see. After bishop takes on h4, we have rook to g7. Check. King to f6. And rook takes on c7. But we have bishop to d3. Well, if capturing the knight, then rook to h7. And white is getting back the piece. But again, black is much better. After bishop to f1, rook takes on h4. Bishop to d3 check. King to b3. And bishop takes on e4. This was just one possibility. And white is losing. Black is a piece up. And white is losing. White has only a pawn. Black has the bishop. This endgame is losing for white. So after rook takes on c7, simply capturing the knight was okay for black. But instead we have bishop to d3. Simplifying the game was the better choice for Du Bois. King to b3 and bishop takes on e4. Capturing one more pawn. King to b4. King to e6. Knight to g5. Bishop takes knight and capturing back. Well, the only hope of Steinitz was this pass pawn. But instead of going after the pawn, Du Bois played rook to d7. And this was a mistake. Rook to g8 was the better move. Black had to defend against the threat of this pawn. And how to defend? Black is much better. And white is losing once again. Let's get back to the real game. After f takes on g5, we have rook to d7 and rook to c8, b6, c4, rook to d1, rook to e8, check, king to f5, and g6 by Steinitz. Now you see better why black had to defend the threat against the pawn. How to defend? If capturing with the king, then rook takes bishop. So we have rook to d7, c5. Rook to d4, king to c3, b takes on c5, and it is white to move, and Stein is played g7. This is incredible, Du Bois, when he had the chance, when he had the advantage, he ruined everything. A simple move, like defending, and attacking the pawn with the rook, would be losing for white, but right now, how to defend the g pawn? One of the only defense is bishop to d5, and then promoting a queen, losing the bishop, and this is a drove. Both players agreed to a drove. This is incredible. 
Well, of course, black is a pawn up. But white can easily defend these pawns with the rook. And this is a drew for the computer chess engine. This was indeed a drew. They agreed to a drew. A disaster for the boys. So this was game two. And Steinis is still leading with one extra point. And this was actually one of the critical moments in this game. Instead of rook to d7, rook to g8 should have been considered for the boys. And white is losing. It appears that the boys didn't have what it takes to defeat Steinitz in the end game. So this is the last position. Rook takes on g8. And they shook hands and agreed to a drug. And I hope to see you next time with the third game. So take care and bye bye.